In this video, I'm going to discuss credit notes or the refunds icon that you have on the main screen, which appears here. If I click this, these, a standard screen will come up similar to the invoice screens. I'm not going to discuss any of this information because we've discussed all that in the invoice, in, invoice videos. Credit notes is not something that a lot of small businesses are going to use, but it does offer you a way of recording refunds that you give back to clients for whatever reason and obviously you want a way of removing that from your income. Now the credit notes are very fairly basic. If I click credit note, if you look at the invoices, the invoices offered you a section down the bottom for subject, quantity, etc. Credit notes don't. They, they're just a very simple way of using a refund method within your accounting structure. Easy as was not first designed for this purpose because we refunding in this sense is something that's normally used when people have a large amount of products and that's retail so easy as is really not designed as a retail program however we know a lot of individuals use other programs for the retail side of their business to accrue an account for stock stock takes and that sort of stuff and they use easy as as their back-end business as their back-end software because it's so much simpler to use as the main program that controls all their income and expenses. However, as a method of refunding, such as say a subcontractor for whatever purpose may be giving someone a credit note for a reducement in work or maybe the, that they were attended for a job and now the clients decide, well I'm not doing that part of the job there now that I've already paid for and you've come to an agreement that I'm going to refund X amount to the client and we're going to subtract that off the amount of the original tender whatever and this offers a way to record that though because you do want some way of recording it so is that you've got it on paper the client gets their copy and everyone's happy so basically with the credit note facility that's provided with easy as it's very simple self-explanatory the date i don't need to go into that the two column you can select someone from your existing address book if they're in your address book so i just selected someone then um, over the side here, you naturally have your project management as per your, your other sections. See these green boxes? Obviously, something in a green box has to be filled out, right? Original invoice. Naturally, it's probably going to come from, an, from, come from an invoice. So you need to put in there what was the invoice number that it came from. If it's not, it doesn't have an invoice number, it still wants something in the box. So obviously, if it doesn't have an invoice number, it's put an NA, not applicable. But I would say most cases, it's going to come from an invoice. So... You type in your invoice number, you know, whatever it is, say it's that number. Any previous credit notes you might have issued, you want to record here. And you want to outline a reason for the re for the refund. So it might be here, um, client decided to reduce scope of work. Okay, so it comes down here and wants to say, what was the original price? of the purchase or the original price that they paid you for a job, whatever it might be, ask you what's the original price, put in the total amount you're refunding, put in the new price. So it, so what we're saying is if say if they was a the original price was a thousand dollars. I'm refunding the client two hundred dollars. Okay, it's come down to this box first. So goes from here to this box next. So okay, so we'll do this box. So it says what is the adjusted price? We're going to refund $200, so that means the new price now is $800. We're refunding $200. Any tax included in the refund? So if there was, if there was obviously if there was sales tax included in the original invoice, um, you'd have to record what component of the refund actually has sales tax included, if sales tax is applicable. You'd obviously have to work that out and enter that in. Now, I'm going to say that there wasn't any sales tax included in that. Why has that come up? I think because I've pressed a key here, have I? I pressed my space bar key or for something on the keyboard then in this box, so that's why that came up. Okay, but naturally, look, if there was sales tax included, you'd have to calculate the sales tax amount in the $200. So it might obviously be that, including the $200, it might actually be $15 of that is sales tax. If I preview this, that's the look of the credit note there. 
and it, it's going to tell us the tax including refund is $15 there so we're refunding the total amount so there's the refund the refund looks quite the actual credit note looks um, quite nice in presentation now how is that going to look if I finish that it comes out with a standard view as per the as per other screens here you can click have I given it to the client? Yes, no. I'm going to cancel that for a minute. So you can click here, have I given the refund out? Yes or no? i change it back to no for a second. You've got on the right-hand side, you can go back and edit the refund. Obviously, all this is, is standard. Standard organizer, standard as per all the other, other um, areas of the, of the program. I'm not going into this here. We've discussed all that before. But let's have a look here. If we do click yes, we've, we've given the refund out. What happens next? You get a box coming up saying, do you want to adjust the income? Well, of course, if we give a refund to a client for some reason, I do want to adjust my income because I now want to reduce the income by $200. So I want to adjust income, yes. And it comes up with your typical screens. If it was part of a category, I'm going to, going to just say it was. Got a help icon here. So it gives us a brief information there anyway. Uh, I'm going to click complete. Now, we've got a little asterisk comes up since we've done that. That little asterisk tells us that we actually sent that to income. Right? Now, let's go over to the income. That's very important. So although it's a very simple way of, of recording refunds, it still tracks it back to the income for you. And that's what you want. Even if you don't issue a client with a refund, even if it's just something you enter in and you don't actually give it to the client, but it's some way that you're recording some sort of reversal of a transaction, you can record it this way if you wanted to. Now, we see here, because I just used any date before, I didn't care what I did, it's recorded that as the 1st of January. I didn't change that when I, when I did the income. So it's shoved it over here, that's fine. But we see us on the side here. We see the little C, that means credit note. Remember at the top it says from invoice credit note? Well, these are invoices. Anything with a C next to it, we instantly know it's a credit note. So that's, that's a way of quickly spying which entries are credit notes. And if you have a look over here, it did the calculation for us. Did we see that? See how before the amount we were funding was 200 the tax was $15. So it automatically done that calculation for us. Even though it didn't appear on the credit note, it did that for us in the income. And that's exactly what you want. You want that to happen. So that's taken care of that for you. Okay, you might have noticed it got these, these minus signs in front of it. Minus 185, minus 15. You've already seen now that you can do that. Anywhere in the program, if you're putting an entry in here, if I enter a an entry in this box here, let's just put this in here, just to say test, because I don't... See, you don't have to... Entries don't have to come from invoices. They can be a direct entry, of course. So I'm doing a direct entry here. Um, I'm going to say that it's it's a I'm I'm removing it I'm removing amounts from here. It might be that um, this might have been a bounce check, for example, that I've entered in. Well, well it won't be a bounce check, but because you wouldn't have already entered it in there. Or it could be you could have entered the check that you deposited in the bank. So you just say it was a bounce check that you're re removing from the system, and it might have been that the total amount might have been. Um, $100. So you put in minus $100. Click OK. And the system calculates that. See, so that's removed the amount of tax that was applicable, removed the amount and the total. So it puts a minus sign in front of it. So you can actually put minus signs in it. And you, and you can enter that direct, of course. I can just go minus whatever it is, 90 here. Enter minus 10 here. So you can enter that direct. So any time you enter a minus sign in front of a figure, it subtracts it. 